April 30th, 1494. Cuba. It's the second voyage of the Genoese mariner Christopher Columbus. He's returned to the Caribbean to take golden slaves, but also to build a colony. And on orders of Queen Isabella of Spain, he's brought along one of the key tools of Spanish colonialism. They trot ashore, squealing in the surf. They are a fundamental element of Spanish settlement, a potent military asset, and a biological weapon without peer. Eight pigs come ashore on the Cuban beach. Their descendants will ravage the Americas for centuries. We talk about pigs, baby! God, I love this show. This episode is sponsored by World of Tanks. Download the game for free at extratanks.com and use the invite code extratanks1 to claim your $15 starter pack. The Spanish invasion and the colonization of the Americas wouldn't have been possible without a few non-human allies. And though horses are the animal most associated with Spanish colonialism, there was another animal just as important. The domestic pig. Pigs traveled with the Spanish almost everywhere they settled. Pork was a staple of their diet, since it survived well in the rocky Spanish terrain, and since most expeditions provisioned themselves in the pig-heavy Canary Islands, it was a logical animal to bring. Pigs were almost the perfect animal to keep aboard ship. Yes, they were dirty, sure, but they were more compact than cows. And while cows, sheep, and goats needed grassy fields, pigs needed whatever. They were omnivorous, so they could live off of table scraps, agricultural byproducts, or even human waste, if that was all that was available. So not only did that make them easy to keep aboard ship, but they could adapt to almost any environment once they arrived. Plus, their short reproductive cycle and large litters meant they could multiply relatively quickly, turning even a few hogs into a self-sustaining population. And they were hardy. The shock of an ocean voyage rendered most farm animals sterile for a year after arrival. But pigs could just, well, keep making more pigs. In fact, the pigs were so hardy that they didn't even need humans to raise them. The Spanish regularly released breeding pairs on Caribbean islands, confident that when they returned months or years later, there would be a large herd of wild pigs ready to feed a colony, resupply a ship, or keep any unfortunate castaways alive. They were essentially the perfect colonial animal, a living build-a-settlement set with versatility beyond peer. When smoked or salted, pork lasted almost indefinitely, and pork products greased the wheels of Spanish society. And I mean that literally, because during this period, anything with wheels only worked if its axles were well lubricated with pork grease. And pork fat provided the key ingredient in products from soap to candles to lantern oil and many types of medicine. Pig organs were the plastic containers of their day, both air and waterproof, used to make everything from balloons to inflatable sports balls to water skins and paint containers. Hog's hair even made the best quality artist brushes in the Renaissance. And this new world would need artists to paint all of the cathedrals these conquistadors planned to build. So as the Spanish established settlements in the Caribbean, Central America, and South America, more and more pigs traveled with them. And the results were nothing less than catastrophic. 20 years after Columbus arrived in Cuba with his eight pigs, the governor of Cuba wrote to the Spanish crown, reporting that there were 30,000 hogs on the island. Now, this may be an exaggeration, but reports from the Caribbean frequently mention the sheer number of the beasts, and locals had also discovered a love for pork, and therefore increasingly raised the creatures themselves. And then there were the escapees. See, what also sets pigs apart is their intelligence. Smarter than even dogs, today's research shows that pigs can plan, think, and even play computer games. That makes them talented escape artists. And within years of Spanish settlement, hordes of pigs were living wild on the Caribbean islands, with no natural predators and perfectly suited to the native environment. They particularly thrived on native fruits, which had evolved no defenses against large mammals, since there were no large mammals in their island's original ecosystems. Huh, fair point, Zoe. While Rob knows history like no one else, and I read it like a champ if I do say so myself, ecological systems are a bit out of our range of expertise. You know, I really wish we knew an ecology expert who could explain why pigs completely wrecked native ecosystems. Ah, what in the babe two pig in the city? Ask and ye shall receive, Matt. Hey, Tirzu! I'm so happy you're here. But why did you have to bore a hole through my wall right there? Ha <laughs> ha, up top, zinger! 
No, I'll um, nope. Okay, I'll just put that back. Because it sounded like you wanted to know more about the specific attributes that made hogs OP throughout history. Oh, I do want that very much. But I also didn't really want to have to redraw that white wall. Sorry, Nick. In that case, once you're done with this video, come check out my video over on my channel Tearzoo, where we'll discuss all of the base stats, special abilities, and unique traits that have given pigs a competitive edge across all of the Game of Life's different expansions, from the Anthropocene's Wild Boar to the Eocene's Hell Pig. Yeah! Wait, uh, what is a Hell Pig? Uh... <laughs> You'll have to come watch the video to find out. See you over there, everyone. Let's roll, Digby. Thanks, Tearzoo! Oh man, it's always nice when friends stop by. Where was I? Oh yeah. Resistant to snake venom, a thick hide that shrugs off most attackers, and the ability to devastate native plants and wildlife? That's our friend the pig. Within decades, wild pigs were destroying Caribbean ecosystems, driving native plants and animals to the brink of extinction. This in turn had dire consequences for the native people whose ways of life depended on those plants and animals. But the damage was not confined to the islands. In 1539, conquistador Hernando de Soto landed in what's now Florida, determined to set off west and explore this new continent. He brought with him 13 pigs, the start he hoped of a new farming settlement. In fact, he was so protective of these animals that he refused to let his soldiers eat them. And instead, they built rafts for the beasts whenever the expedition crossed a river. Three years later, when DeSoto's men secretly dropped his corpse in the Mississippi River, which is a long and separate story involving claiming to be a sun god, those 13 pigs had turned into 700. And that's not counting those that soldiers ate or that escaped, forming a population of feral hogs that are still to this day causing ecological damage in the United States. In fact, in many places, like in the American Southwest, conquistadors reported that populations of feral pigs actually arrived before they did. What that meant was that a biological invasion preceded the Spanish one. Groups of unfamiliar animals destroyed native environments, disrupting local wildlife and the societies that depended on them. More damaging still was the fact that this wave of unfamiliar animals also carried unfamiliar diseases. Pigs can catch and carry a number of diseases that can transfer to humans, most notably the flu, and their bacteria and parasites contaminate any river or lake they defecate in. The result was an epidemic. A century after De Soto's stealthy funeral on the river, a French expedition entered the Mississippi Valley to find a population one-tenth the size of what De Soto described. The cities, the villages, all wiped out. Was that from pig-borne diseases? Maybe, but it's impossible to be sure. But the pig's use as a tool of conquest was no accident, because they were also a military asset. A mobile food source that could be herded behind the troops, pigs served an essential logistical role in the campaigns that toppled the largest empires of the Americas. Cortez brought thousands of pigs with him when he toppled the Aztec Empire, and Francisco Pizarro, who ironically might have been a swine herd early in life, marched into the Andes with a great herd of hogs at his back, determined to strip the Inca Empire of its treasure. Which leads us nicely to the fact that next week, we're going to start our five-part series on the rise and fall of the Inca Empire. Spoiler alert, there are gonna be lots of mummies! And finally, thanks again to Tirzu for paying us a visit, lending us their ecological expertise, and reminding us that history is more than just about humans. I'm gonna head over to their channel to learn more about pig pecking orders by, I guess, just going through this precarious hog hole here. Uh, but you, you just to be safe, should click the link in the description below. And I'll see you over there. Actually, let's race. Ready? Go! Go! Ooh, um, I'm okay. Uh, catch you soon. Once again, thank you to World of Tanks for sponsoring this episode. With realistic combat situations, continuous updates, and over 500 vehicles to choose from, you can really go hog wild. Now that... That pig joke not work for you? Okay, well, just be sure to keep your boar evacuator clean. Tank jokes. We got them. Oh, boy, that was bad. Quick, uh, show the game. So if that looks up your alley, download the game for free at extratanks.com and use the invite code extratanks1 to claim your $15 starter pack. Special thanks to educational tier patrons Ahmed Ziad Turk and Joseph Blaine.